Okay, right, here we go again. First of all, I will say about this guy, I actually quite respect him. I've watched a few of his videos about other topics um, and I've always found him intelligent, quite reasoned, um, quite fair. Um, and he does seem to have quite a balanced view and wants to make a change. And his videos have a purpose. They want to inform and educate. Um, so I have no qualms with him making a video about me or about this topic. Um, but since he has, I have a right to reply, which is what this video is. It's not me attacking him. It's not me saying that he shouldn't make videos about me. But since he has, I will defend myself. And also, I think people need to recognize that I don't really understand why there is so much scrutiny surrounding my decision to take legal action against Alex Belfield and ask for help. One of the things that Belfield did to try and defend his actions and behaviour was to compare me to an MP or the Prime Minister. He said in court that he was entitled to make over 30 videos about me and harass me in the same way that people make videos about the Prime Minister. The difference is, I am not a public figure. I do not hold a job in a publicly funded organisation, such as the BBC or the government. There shouldn't be any level of scrutiny or invasion of my privacy. And yes, I recognise that I am playing this out on a public forum, but I still should maintain my privacy because this is a private matter that ultimately I am reaching out to people publicly about. But in the same way you wouldn't challenge somebody who was running a fun run or a marathon to raise money for charity. So I really don't understand why so many people are on my case and giving me beef for doing this. Just want to make that clear. And also, I'm not forcing anybody to donate. If you don't want to donate to me, that's fine, don't. But I'm appealing to people who might. So all these people who are scrutinizing whether I should ask for help, don't fail to recognize that asking for help is never easy. And part of what I've maintained from the beginning of this is that I spoke out against a bully. I stood up for myself and I will continue to stand up for myself by making these videos defending myself. So with all that said, let's get into it. Now obviously I knew this video was coming because Paz had put out a poll on his YouTube channel asking is it right that Alex Belfield victim Phil Delaney ask you to help crowdfund his attempt to sue him for defamation? Despite what I think of Belfield, I think it's a bit cheeky of Phil and he should fund his own court case video on the next week. Okay, for a start, this poll is not balanced. He's basically already telling you his opinion. So it's like saying, well, which do you prefer? Which option do you think you should pick? That's unfair, that's not balanced. So I'm just gonna say that. And ultimately, I'm not disputing it's Paz's opinion and he's entitled to express it. But what I'm saying, if you're trying to conduct a fair poll and you want to gauge a balanced response, don't lead with your opinion, which goes one way or the other. That's not balance. So the poll continues. Yes, we should help crowdfund him taking Belfield to the cleaners. No, the cheeky sod should do it himself. Yes, only if he refunds everyone who contributed if he wins. And finally, I don't care, he's enough a grifter like Belfield. Again, the terminology there, calling me a grifter. You're 
pushing a narrative and pushing an opinion and an agenda onto me. You're not just saying yes or no. You're trying to influence people to think a certain way about me. And also, you haven't done any research. I've said throughout all this that all the donations that I get, if I am successful and win back the damages and legal costs, I will donate every penny that I raise through donations to charity. Specifically, the Terence Higgins Trust, which is a charity that helped me in particular when I was struggling after being outed by Alex Belfield for being HIV positive. You will know this if you did the slightest bit of research into this case. So the question is invalid because you should already know the answer of what I intend to do with the money and how I intend to pay it forward rather than give it back. There is no way to give money back. If anybody out there has done a crowdfund me, you will know this. There are privacy protocols that means I don't even know who has donated to me and I have no way of contacting them directly or reimbursing them. So all the times that Alex Belfield in particular promised that he was going to give every penny back if he won his case when he claimed that he was going to sue the BBC, it was all a lie because there was no way that he could possibly give the money back because there was no facility available to do that in a crowdfund me. I was trolled relentlessly by people like Jeremy Vine, people like Philip De Haney, that stagey blog, and also people like Greg Scott. All these people should be answerable to the law. I can't afford to do it by myself. It's going to cost a hundred to two hundred thousand pounds for this. So please help by donating what you can at the GoFundMe page. It will all be refunded if we win and the costs are returned. I won't make a penny out of it. This is not about me profiteering. This is about me standing up to the bully BBC who want to wipe out people who want to expose them as the crooks they are. Now, like I say, this is Paz's prerogative and he's quite entitled to put a poll on his YouTube and to articulate it in any way he wants. But I'm just trying to make him recognise that the impact that that had on me by reading his comments in that way, it was upsetting. And I'm not going to say I wasn't hurt by this. Ultimately, as I say, because I don't think anybody has the right to scrutinise me for doing this. To chastise me for asking for help. That's all I'm doing. I'm in a position where I've got no choice. And if you don't want to help me, that's fine. But don't be unkind and try to suggest reasons why I don't deserve help. When it's taken a lot of courage to just ask for it. And ultimately, this guy clearly has his own opinion, which he's expressed making it completely biased not to mention he's got all his facts wrong I'm not suing for defamation I'm suing for harassment and with the suggestion that I'll pay everybody back with the donations I've already said that I intend to donate the money to the Terence Higgins Trust after this I posted a video urging Paz to reach out to me if he wanted clarification if he wanted any answers or had any questions he could have asked me directly and I tagged him in this video in the description. Unfortunately I don't think he saw this video because he didn't respond to it and he didn't reach out to me which again there's no obligation there he doesn't have to I'm not suggesting he does but what I am saying that if he genuinely is in the pursuit of finding out the truth presenting a balanced argument then why would you not reach out to the source to get the facts before making a video? This is where I have a conflict with this type of journalism or this type of reporting. We'll continue. So, 
let's dive into the video. Okay, so I am going to commend Paz for doing this and I do honestly appreciate this. So my first comment is a thank you. Originally, Paz called this video, Philip Dehaney should sue Alex Belfield off his own back. I pointed out that that wasn't a fair title because it already reinforces his opinion rather than present a balanced argument. I suggested that if he changed it to should Philip Dehaney sue Alex Belfield off his own back, then that invites an opinion and a balance. And credit to him, he has changed the title of this video, which I do appreciate and respect. So thank you for doing that. Let's continue. Now, I made a poll on my channel regarding this guy a few months ago, and it's in regard to him asking people for money to help fund a court case against Alex Belfield, in which he hopes to gain compensation from him. Now, in case you don't know who this guy is, Philip Dehaney is one of Alex Belfield's victims, and the impact of what Alex Belfield did to him was huge. His reputation was seriously damaged. It affected him as a person and he ultimately lost his income as a theatre blogger and he is now seeking therapy. I cannot thank you enough for recognising me. Um, you say quite clearly, as it is, that I did lose my income, that I was damaged and I am seeking therapy. That is research that you've done um, and I honestly cannot thank you enough for relaying that to your audience because those are the facts um, and it's very, very much appreciated. Now he has a crowdfunding thing going on. I think it's on justpledge.com, I'm not too sure. Okay, first hurdle. <sighs> You know that I've got a crowd fund me going on, yep. You've already looked at it, but you haven't helped anybody in your audience who might want to donate. I'm not saying you should, but straight off the bat, you're giving misinformation. You're saying it's just pledge.com when it's not, it's crowd justice. And I don't know what that is about whether you just made a mistake or you're purposely trying to put people off from reaching out to me in other videos that I've seen and I'm not saying you should do this but other people have actually donated to me and have put the link in the description of the video to allow people who might sympathize with me and might want to support the opportunity and to signpost where they can find the link to my crowd justice campaign um, but yeah, that doesn't bode well with me that you've got it wrong and like I say, I don't expect you to help me, don't expect you to encourage people to donate to me, but if you're going to make a video presenting facts and you've, <laughs> you've tripped up on the first one, it doesn't bode well, in my opinion. But he has already raised 1850 and he's looking to raise £1,500. Okay, I'll just clarify this, because initially I was looking to raise £1,500 to pay off my existing bill. Once I achieved that, I did extend the target to £15,000. Um, so yeah, you're right, I have raised £1,850 now. Um, but my target is now 15,000, which will cover the next stage in my claim, which is to produce the particulars of the claim to present to the court, allowing Alex Belfield to then present his defense. So that's the stage we're at. So I just wanted to clarify that because we've gone beyond the initial target of 1,500 and are now looking for 15,000. Again, it's just clarification. So we can take this to court. And as he says in this crowdfunder, 
I quote, unless Belfield agrees to settle with me, which seems very unlikely, I will have no choice but to issue court proceedings against him and my cost to take the matter all the way to trial could reach £100,000, unquote. Okay, so this is a fact. If the case goes all the way to trial, it could cost £100,000. But the reality is that Belfield will not be able to produce a defence. Belfield is currently in jail for stalking me. He will not be able to prepare a defence claiming that he did not harass me when part of his stalking conviction includes the harassment of me. So, in all reality, this case will never get that far that it will end up costing 100,000. Unfortunately, we are in a position where we have to follow protocol and we have to allow Alex Belfield to prepare his defence, which costs me 15,000 pounds, which is all I'm asking for at the moment. Like I say, if Belfield, by some miracle, manages to find a defence and presents it, and the court accepts this, then we would go to trial. But that is unlikely. So it is unlikely that we will raise or need to raise £100,000 or that this case will ever cost that. I put it in my claim from the start for transparency because I want people to know that that is a possibility, but it is unlikely. So I just wanted to clarify that. But you were right to quote it because it is something that I said. Now, okay, fair enough. What Alex Belfield did to him and others was heinous. Okay, again, thank you for recognising and seeing me as a victim. You're right. What Alex did to myself, my family and the other victims was heinous. And I really do appreciate you for recognising that. So thank you. And if it was me personally, I would be happy that Alex Belfield is in jail. Okay, now this is a bit contentious. The question of whether I should feel happy that Alex Belfield is in jail, I take no pleasure from any of this. I don't set out to put Alex Belfield in jail. I just set out to stop him. And at every point where I tried to block and I tried to ignore or I went to the police, I was turned away. And at those points, it felt like Alex Belfield recognised that he was getting away with it. And in my opinion, that is what fueled him. That's what made him worse. Because he was effectively getting away with it, it pushed him to do more. And that was his downfall because he didn't stop and he was relentless. If he just made videos about me on YouTube, we would not have had a case. But because he then decided to investigate my past, find out things about me which he blackmailed me for, find out where my parents lived, threatened to play a recording that he made by phoning my mum, these were all invasions of my privacy and this was stalking, which is why the jury found him guilty of stalking. It wasn't down to just hurty words or free speech or the fact that he was making several videos about me. It was what he did after that. And like I say, I just wanted to stop him. Not just for me, for my family and all the other victims. That's why I called him out in the first place. So no, I don't take pleasure or happiness that he is in prison. I actually feel sorry for the guy to an extent. Because what I've learned recently is that prison is not proving as a reform to him. He has not accepted any responsibility or acknowledged what he did. And he still does not feel he's done anything wrong which is worrying because he is in prison and he's going to be in there for at least two years and yet he's still not taking that time 
to reflect or rehabilitate. So when it comes to the question, am I happy or feel satisfied that he is in prison? I don't because I don't think it's going to have any impact on him. I don't think anything will. He will not stop. And the reason I know this is because he has continued to slander me in letters that he has sent out to other people. And I've read a letter that he sent to somebody in which he maintains his defence that it was just free speech and that it was a witch hunt by the BBC and that he did nothing wrong and that he will continue and carry on when he gets out. So that is not reassurance to a victim like me that prison has been effective. It's incredibly worrying to think that he will and intends to just come out in two years and pick up where he left off. So the debate and discussion over whether I'm happy that he's in prison or satisfied, I can't say I am. He screwed Alex Belfield. He can't have a social media comeback. I, I think you're wrong. Belfield has no limitations or restrictions. Yes, there are restraining orders, which means he cannot publish anything regarding me and the ten other people who have restraining orders. But he can still talk about other topics. And let's be honest, his career and growth as a channel was not based on me by any stretch of the imagination. It was not down to him just making videos about me. He made 30 videos of thousands of videos about hundreds of topics. Alex Belfield's channel still exists. His Twitter handle still exists. His website, which he charges a subscription for, still exists. These are all things that he will still have when he comes out of prison. And not only that, he will have notoriety and a vendetta. So absolutely, he will pick up where he left off and he will manage to carve a career. He only has to go and work for GBN News or any of these publications. You know what? Daily Mail will probably take him back as a columnist. Honestly, it could happen. He's not coming back from this. It's all over for him. The police, the Crime Prosecution Service, they have seen to that with various court orders. Okay, so with regards to the court orders, I just mentioned that a minute ago. Yes, the court order does protect me from Belfield publishing anything online about me, but it doesn't protect me from him writing to someone privately. So in the case of the evidence that recently was presented to me, I have seen firsthand an example of Belfield writing to someone and slandering me and Jeremy Vine and talking about our case, which, as I say, the restraining order does prohibit, but it doesn't prevent him from doing this privately. So he could write to hundreds of thousands of people about us and he is doing. So, unfortunately, the restraining order isn't really worth the paper it's written on, and I don't feel protected by it. The only way I will ever feel protected is if Alex Belfield admits and acknowledges what he did to me, which would discredit any future claims that he has that he did nothing wrong. If it's on public record from his own admission that he lied and made false allegations about me, then even if he was to keep writing to people, it wouldn't stand up because he's made that admission. That's what I'm after. That, do you understand? This is what it comes down to and why I'm seeking this civil case to get that affirmation from Alex Belfield so that I can protect my name in the future and to clear my name because these rumours and lies are still out there and are still being circulated 
by people who had been incited by Alex Belfield. Yep, it's not going to stop it. They will still be able to do that. But it will reduce Alex Belfield's credibility if he acknowledges of his own accord that he lied and made false allegations about me. He's already done it for Jeremy Vine. All I'm asking is for the same. When he comes out of jail, he will be on license and they will be checking his uh, online devices. And like I said, he's finished. It's all over. If he does manage a comeback, it'll be a miracle. But like uh, someone once said about him, you can't cure narcissism, but a spell in prison surely has put a dampener on it. As I say, unfortunately, prison hasn't stopped him. If anything, he's still writing to people, slandering me. And yeah, I do think he has a comeback on the cards and I think he'll achieve it, unfortunately. If you look at the support that Belfield still has, it's worrying. But like I said, I would be happy that Alex Belfield is in jail and he's effectively finished. This is where I question this. Paz is saying that he would be happy just to know that Alex Belfield is in jail. I dispute this. Knowing him, from what I do know of him in his videos and his conviction and his sense of morality, I don't for a second think that he wouldn't be doing exactly what I'm doing right now if he was in my shoes. He would defend himself to the end and he would not accept the shit that I've been, had to put up with in the same way that I'm not prepared to. So I'm sorry, I don't know. I mean, if, if, if it is true, if that is your opinion that you would be happy and sat satisfied that he's in prison, fair enough. But I think it's highly unlikely. And ultimately you wouldn't know because this isn't happening to you. As I've said before, this is not a soap opera. This is my life, unfortunately. And when people keep telling me to move on and move forward or get over it, I don't think I ever can. And I certainly can't at the moment while all this is going on. And believe me, I want to. I want nothing more than to forget about all this and not have to make videos and just carry on with my life. And don't get me wrong, I am doing everything I can to move up forward and get on with things while this is going on but until it's resolved it will hang over me and ultimately I am a victim here this is something that I will never fully get over it is something that I unfortunately will carry throughout my life so yeah it is it's a difficult situation and I'm not expecting you to be able to understand it but when you're speculating about how you might feel in a situation, that's all it is, it's speculation. What I'm presenting is, is how I feel in my situation. So you have to respect that and you shouldn't victim shame me for feeling this way. Being this guy, having gone through what he has, he has a right to ask for compensation. Uh, to sue him for what he did because for him the effects of what Alex Belfield did uh, far transcend him being sentenced to prison and this guy could have therapy long after Alex Belfield comes out so he has every right to do so I'm not questioning that at all thank you again like I say a lot of this video I am thanking you because you do seem to see it from my perspective and you are acknowledging that I do have the right to sue Alex Belfield. So yeah, thanks. What I am questioning is that he is asking other people to fund it for him. Okay. Why? This is what I don't understand. Like, why, why are you questioning this? I'm not a public figure. This is just me standing in front of my phone making a video asking people that if they recognize what I'm going through and they want to help me, they can. 
but it's up to them. I'm not forcing anybody to donate to me. I'm just asking if they would like to. So I don't understand why you want to challenge that or feel the need to challenge that. As I said, I'm not a public figure. I don't work for the government or a publicly funded organization. I'm just one man who's been a victim of what you've described as a heinous crime. And I'm looking for retribution. And this could make him a rich man if he does get a couple of hundred grand out of Alex Belfield. Okay, this is where I need to call you out on this because this is pure speculation. You plucked that figure out of thin air. You wouldn't have somebody like Black Belt Barrister claiming that I could earn £200,000 from this because it's not true. The reality is this case would never be worth more than 50000 And I can tell you that when we opened negotiations, the settlement figure was around £20,000. So it was far from this amount that you have plucked out of thin air. And the problem I have with this is that you're painting a picture of me. You're creating a distorted view by speculating that I'm going to earn £200,000. That changes things in people's perceptions. And it's not right. And it's not accurate. So you need to stop that. Well, through the court system, then that money will be his to enjoy. And again, don't push your ideology onto me that I'm going to enjoy this money or that I'm doing it for the money because I'm not and I will put it back on you I hope you are enjoying every penny that you make from these videos that you're making about Alex Belfield because some could argue that it's blood money or it's tainted because you're capitalizing on Alex Belfield, you're using his name and his brand to make yourself money. But if you can live with that, I'm not going to question it or challenge it. That's your choice and your prerogative. Are you donating to charity all the earnings from these videos? No. But what I am setting out to do is just that. I'm saying I'm going to donate every penny that I raise through crowd justice to charity. I'm not here to make money and I will add as well that I purposely demonetized this channel so that I wouldn't get accused of making all these videos in order to earn money. I am doing this for justice and I want to be fair. So please, please stop speculating and suggesting that I'm taking any enjoyment from this or that I will gain any enjoyment from any settlement I might win. Because I won't. It's not about that. But what about the people who donated? Do they get their money back? Or is it a case of, thanks for the money, I'll do what I want? <sighs> there we go again. As I've said, I'm not going to sound like a broken record. I've already said... I intend to pay the money forward and donate it to charity. My frustration is that you would know this if you'd asked me or if you'd looked into my case. You've already said that you saw my crowd justice. You've already read quotes from it. So I don't understand why you've not presented this evidence or the facts that I intend to donate the money to charity. What you're doing is portraying me in an incorrect way. You're making me sound and look like a money grabber, like a penny pincher, like all these things that people are accusing me of being. And I, I don't understand why, because if the point of this video is that you have that question, if that is a burning question that you generally wonder what will happen to the money and will he pay it back? 
then why did you not come to me, the source, and ask? Any journalist, any reporter would just find that information out before reporting it. So this is where I think the lines blur. This is not what it seems. On the surface, it looks like you're trying to find the truth. You're asking the questions that other people might be asking because you want the answers. If you wanted the answers, you know where to find them. You could have just come to the source and asked me directly, what do you intend to do with the money? How will you pay it back? Instead, you presented it as an argument to portray me in a certain way. And I'm sorry, that is unfair. I'm going to enjoy myself, which is very Alex Belfieldy, if you ask me. Okay, that is the biggest insult you can ever make to me. And I will take objection to that. I am not Alex Belfield. Alex Belfield, yes, he launched two GoFundMes for a claim that he was suing the BBC. As we all know, this didn't happen. The GoFundMes were reported as fraudulent and I don't even know whether the money was paid back or whether he managed to keep it. He then obviously moved on to PayPal and asked people to donate to him directly. But again, it was a lie. He wasn't and didn't have a case against the BBC. He kept all that money. And I will state at this point, because I think it's important, all the money that I'm raising through Crowd Justice and the reason I'm using Crowd Justice which is an expensive service. They take 6% of all the donations. The reason I'm using it is to give me credibility and to reassure anybody that's donating that that money is going directly to my solicitor. I do not see a penny of it. And as I said, if I win it back, it will go to a charity. So I will never see a penny of any of these donations. They're certainly not going in my back pocket like they were with Alex Belfield. And unlike Alex Belfield, I do actually have a case. My case is ongoing, it's live, it's active. I have a solicitor. I'm not pretending or defrauding anybody. So please, please consider that if you're still sat on the fence about whether you want to donate to me or not. And certainly bear that in mind before you make any accusations against me and please do not compare me to Alex Belfield. I am not a stalker. I did not harass or victimize anybody. Even in these videos, these are a right to reply. I'm not attacking anybody. I'm just defending myself because somebody else has made a video about me and I want to clear up everything that was said in that video. But I think for him also to put down YouTubers like History Debunked for making various videos on Alex Belfield and helping to uh, raise the issue. No, I will not accept this. History Debunked did not help to raise the issue of Alex Belfield. I helped to raise the issue of Alex Belfield by being the first person to call him out, by going to the police with information that led to his arrest, that led to his conviction. I'm the one that stood up in court and gave two days of evidence at my own sacrifice. I'm the one that lost everything and it tore my family apart in the process. So, no, I'm not going to credit people like History Debunked who are making videos to essentially increase their channel. I'm not saying he needs it. His channel's massive. But why does he feel the need to talk about Alex Belfield? And if he does feel the need, do some research. By all means, I've said this time and time again. I encourage and welcome people to make videos about Alex Belfield because I want the truth to be out there. 
But for my perception of what History Debunk did, he's not helping the cause because he's presenting misinformation. And even when I called him out and responded to his video, he hasn't got back to me. And again, he has no obligation to get back to me. But if I posted something incorrect, I would hand, hold my hands up and say, sorry, I got that wrong. In the way that Paz did in this video, which I respect, he changed the title of the video because I said it was unfair. And he valued my opinion and perception. And he did something about it. With regards to History Debunked, he has not taken any accountability for anything that he said in his video that I then challenged. And he certainly hasn't rebuked it. His whole channel is about debunking factual errors. And yet, in a video full of them that he made to make money, no, no, I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not going to give him any credit for helping. And accusing others. Um, it didn't name me, but I've made a few videos on Alex Belfield. Uh, and being accused of making the videos for clicks is just, well, it's half true. Okay. I don't understand where you're going with, with this. I pointed out my opinion that people are making videos using Belfield's name to cash in, that they're doing it for clicks to grow their channel. And you've just admitted that you, as a YouTube content creator, do on occasion do that. So I don't understand how you can then challenge me for presenting that argument when you then Ad admit it it makes no sense like I have a double down and say yeah guilty but don't paint me as a villain who's going around accusing people of doing this when I'm right we're youtubers that's what we do we do videos for clicks and views and engagement for that I will not lie but I also like to raise issues now I don't speak on behalf of history debunk but I suggest it's the same for him as well. But for Philip Dehaney to denounce people like us, YouTubers like uh, me and uh, History Debunked. Like I say, I'm not denouncing you. I actually respect you and I like a lot of your content. I have actually watched many of your videos. But what I'm saying is there needs to be a level of care when making these videos and certainly there should be a level of fact checking and research and from what I saw in History Debunked videos there was no research and even in this video although like I say there has been a lot of research and I've commended you and thanked you at every point that I've recognized that there is also this grey area where you're presenting questions, which I don't think are questions. They're just a way, as I see it, for you to push your opinion and express your opinion, but make it seem like you're asking a question and looking for the truth. I mean, if you want the truth, as I keep saying, just come to the source. I lived through this, you know what I mean? People can make their videos as much as they want. I'm not saying people shouldn't, but ultimately, who has the greater insight in all of this? The person who lived through it, who you're talking about, or these people who, by their own admission, are just making videos to make money because it is their living. That is all I'm saying. And then going on a live stream with a guy who does nothing but videos on Alex Belfield is a bit rich. Okay, so the reason I went on Adrian Allen, as I've explained, he knows Alex Belfield. He's known Alex Belfield for 25 years since they were teenagers. 
they've worked together. Again, when it comes to insight and authority on a subject, Adrian Allen has that. And Adrian reached out to me as well as donating to my cause, which again, I'm very grateful and I'm not saying everybody should feel obligated to, but he did. Um, he reached out to me and took me for lunch before inviting me to speak on his channel. And bear in mind, I did not talk about Alex Belfield for an entire year following his trial because I don't want to talk about it and because I was hoping to resolve this civil case privately. But then I was pushed into a corner by Alex Belfield who refused to settle the case that meant I had no choice but to present my side of the story and begin to make all these videos. Now what Adrian Allen did very kindly was offer me his platform to talk about how it was for me and it's the only time that I've extensively talked about my experience. We chatted for over an hour, he asked me questions, he took questions from people who were watching the live stream as well and I answered them all fully. But this is not something that I said was exclusive to Adrian Allen. I've welcomed this from anybody and I've said this to everybody. If there's anybody out there who wants to ask me any questions, reach out to me. If there's anybody out there who wants me to come on their channel, I will do. There's no exclusivity here. I just want the truth to get out there, which is why, as I say, I welcome anybody to make videos. But that's the point. It has to be the truth. I'm not interested in people just wading in and expressing an opinion when they don't know all the facts or haven't done all the research. If you want to know anything, ask me. If you want me to come on your channel, ask me. Like I say, I'm not doing it for the money. I don't expect a fee. I will do it. So yes, yeah, so I won't have you criticising Adrian Allen, who, as far as I'm concerned, showed me some generosity and kindness by welcoming me on his channel in a very fair way. He asked me questions. He allowed me to talk. If you watch it back, he didn't force his opinion on anybody. He barely said a word. It was me. It was my testimony, my account of my experience, having lived through this. Adrian, I just want to say thanks, first of all, for inviting me on your channel. Um, part of the reason I'm talking to you is because you actually reached out to me. Um, I think there are a lot of people out there that are posting videos about Alex Belfield without a real insight or understanding of who he is. And you know, have known him for 20, 25 years? Yeah, since he was 17. He's 43 now. So you know the case, and you've obviously followed it throughout this. Um, and this is the thing. It's not a soap opera. This is my life that we're discussing, that people are commenting on and making videos. And people... Obviously, Alex Belfield is a hot topic and it feels like sometimes people are just making videos and putting his name in a video to put their channel or to get clicks. Whereas with you, I, I trust that you want to get the truth out there yeah. in the same way that I do. Like my channel is not monetized. Um, we'll come on to this later about why I'm finally speaking out. But um, yeah, this is part of the reason I'm talking to you today is out of gratitude because you did check in on me you reached out to me you made sure I was okay um which a lot of these people who are making these videos haven't done so there we go I'm not questioning what he went through what he suffered and I truly hope he gets the help he needs and gets better thank you sincerely honestly this whole experience has been horrible from start to finish and even this experience of having to continue to defend myself and face this scrutiny is exhausting and it's tiring and it's difficult um and like i say i want nothing more than to draw a line under it and move on 
So I do recognize and appreciate your kindness. That's not gone unnoticed. So thank you. But if he wants to sue someone for lots of money, then he should do it off his own back. But yeah, there we go again. <laughs> for every good, there's a bad. Um, as I said, it's your opinion. If you don't want to help or support me, you don't have to. But please don't insinuate that I'm doing this for the money and that I can expect to gain a lot of money because that's not true. Um, and yeah, as well, when it comes to this suggestion that I should do it off my own back, the reason I am asking for help, which I don't know if you're recognizing because nobody seems to be discussing this, is the fact that I have already spent four thousand pounds of my own money, which is all it should have taken to settle this case. That money was spent to produce the initial letter of claim for the case, which opened the negotiations with Alex Belfield. He is the one that could have made this go away. And it's his right not to. If he feels he has something to, to defend, that's his prerogative. And he exercised that right by refusing to settle, which now leaves me in a position where I either walk away and lose that £4,000 of my own money that I paid to get these videos taken down and to get this apology of Alex Belfield that he offered to Jeremy Vine, but won't offer to me because he recognises that Jeremy Vine is of more influence more power, wealthier than somebody like me. So where am I left? I'm now here rattling my tin, as people say, begging for help. I don't see it like that. I see it as me asking for help. I'm not putting a gun to anybody's head. If you don't want to help, you don't help. But you don't have to <laughs> chastise me for asking. Or criticize me you could just not help so that is where we're at I I cannot afford 15,000 pounds for the next stage in this legal fight all I'm asking is for people if they want to help me to donate and then I will pass all those donations on to charity because I don't want to make any money from those donations. I don't think that's too much to ask. I don't think I'm being unreasonable and I don't know why people keep challenging me and saying that I should should be paying it off my own back when I have already spent four thousand pounds of my own money and I wish I had fifteen thousand pounds I wish I did, but I don't. And ultimately, as people have recognized, the donations aren't flooding in. And this is gonna take a long time. And it might come down to the fact that I will have to spend the next five years saving money until I've got enough money to pay my own legal fees. But within that, I have to live with this for the next five years. I'm not able to move on. So that's why I'm asking for help to speed up this process so that I can finally draw a line under it and move on because that is all I want to do. And if you want to sit there and hinder my efforts, question my motives, question my integrity fine that's fine but like I say remember that every video that you're making is making you money think about that and a little thank you to youtubers like history debunked and I for highlighting this issue to people who never heard of it wouldn't really go amiss 
and I'm sorry, no, no. I think that is a reach. And I'm sorry, no, no, I'm not going to give you credit for raising the awareness or getting involved in this. Because like I said, I was the one that called Alex Belfield out. I was the one that gave evidence in court and got his conviction. You might be discussing the issue, but you don't own it. I have thanked you throughout this video for showing kindness and for recognizing me, but I'm certainly not going to credit you and thank you for highlighting Alex Belfield's behavior when you wouldn't have known about it had I not taken the courage and spoken out about him in the first place. You should be thanking me and that's <laughs> All I've got to say about it, Roger Trout, no hard feelings, I do honestly think you're a great, great guy.